In this video, we have a function of two variables, and it's defined by definite integrals. It's a little bit funky, and we have to evaluate it at various ordered pairs. So the input in this function is an ordered pair. That's in the domain of the function, and the output is, is in the range. So we're just evaluating what's called a multivariable function. Okay, so before we do any work, I think it might be a good idea to integrate this first. So let's do that. I haven't done this problem yet, so I don't know uh, how messy it will be. So if you integrate this with respect to t, you get 2t squared over 2, 2t squared over 2, using the power rule, minus 3t. Okay, that wasn't so bad. And then you, you put your little bracket here, and then you're going from x to y. So x to y. Okay, so then g of x, y, let's keep going. Let's see, these, these cancel. So we just get t squared minus 3t. Let's so plug in the y first, so you end up with y squared minus 3y minus, and then you plug in the x, so parentheses x squared minus 3x. Yeah, good stuff. So far, it's been a lot easier than I expected it to be. I, I thought we were going to get some fractions. Thankfully, there was a 2 there, and that saved the day. So g of xy, this is equal to, let me just rewrite it one more time, y squared minus 3y minus x squared plus 3x. So now it's just a matter, I'm going to put this in a box, because this is a huge accomplishment. So now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers and being careful. I don't have a calculator with me, so I'm going to try to do it all by hand and not mess up. So let's see, g of 4 comma 0. Oh, oh, it's really easy to mess up. You see, because the y comes first. I was putting, I was going to put a 4 here, but it's wrong. So y is 0, so all of these are zeros, because your y is 0. So you get 0 minus 4 squared plus 3 times 4. So you get minus 16 plus 12. So that's equal to minus 4. Boom. 1 down, 3 to go. So g of 4, 1. Again, your y is 1, so you get 1 minus 3. And this time, uh, oh, oh, as before, your x is going to be 4. It'd be easier to plug it in here, but I'll just stick to this. Minus 16 plus 12, just like before. So this is negative 2. Combining these gives you negative 2. Combining these gives you negative 4. So we get negative 6. 2 down. Let's keep going. Uh-oh, g of 4, 1 half, fractions, game over. So uh, that's our y. So 1 half squared is 1 fourth. That's not so bad. Minus 3 times 1 half. So 3 halves. Then again, the x is 4 again. So we know that's negative 16 plus 12, just like before. So 1 fourth minus 3 halves. So when you're doing stuff like this, it's a good thing to think um, of 3 halves. Think of it as 6 fourths. Multiply it by 2 over 2. So it's 1 fourth minus 6 fourths. That's negative 5 fourths. Again, 3 halves is 6 fourths. So 1 fourth minus 6 fourths is negative 5 fourths and then minus 4. Think of 4 as a number over 4. So 16 fourths. So negative 5 fourths minus 16 fourths is negative 21 fourths. That's how pros do it. So this is 16 fourths. Yep, works out okay. Last one, g of 1 half, comma, 0. Hurrah, the y's are 0. That's always a good thing. So 0 minus 0 is 0. So you get 0 minus 1 fourth plus 3 halves. So again, think of it as 6 fourths. So this is really 6 fourths. Negative 1 fourth plus 6 fourths is equal to 5 fourths. And that is the final answer, and that is an ugly 6. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who is working on this stuff. Take care.